Hello, in session three, we're going to talk about variables. We'll see the definition, the different types of variables with their scale of measurement, and we will talk about study variables. So to start with, a variable in general is defined as a characteristic of a person, an object, or a phenomenon that can take on different values. For example, all of these factors listed here, all of these characteristics can be treated as variables uh, in how the can research like age, gender, place of residence, treatment outcome, family history of some disease condition, radiologic features, laboratory parameters, behavioral factors, and many other factors can be uh, treated as variables in healthcare research. But in other research, uh, uh, an object or a phenomena in then human study, these things, these characteristics of an object or a phenomena can also be treated as variables. It's not just an individual or human being attributes that we call variables. On the definition of a variable, you see a, a very important uh, criteria here. For a characteristic or a factor to be called a variable, it should assume different values. Uh, for example, let's take gender. If we are studying about uh, prevalence of hypertension in a tertiary hospital, then we are automatically going to have male and female population. But if you're studying about the prevalence of cesarean section in a tertiary hospital, then our entire population is going to be female. So in, the, in this study, gender uh, can be treated as a variable. But in the second research, gender is not a variable because it's a homogeneous population. It can't assume different values. So since the whole purpose of having a variable, measuring a variable is to use it in our analysis so that we can understand the within variable characteristic difference or uh, influence on our outcome. So for example, by having male and female categories in our hypertension study, we can later analyze it and learn that, learn that if females or males are more at risk of being hypertensive or the other way around. So unless our variable or the characteristic or factor that we are studying cannot assume different values, we can't call it a variable and we shouldn't even collect data on it because it's known that it's homogeneous and same value for every study participant. So uh, the value our variable can take can be expressed in two general ways. The first one is categorical or qualitative type of variable and the other is numeric or quantitative variable. So when we are dealing with categorical or numerical variables, we further classify them into different groups based on the scale of measurement these uh, types of variables can assume. For example, in categorical variable, that means it's a variable which uh, assumes uh, responses which are in categories, not in numbers. So when we have these uh, responses which can only be measured uh, using categories, we can have two different scale of measurement. The first one is when these categories do not have any natural order. That means if they do not have any rank, uh, then we call them nominal variables. For example, in gender, uh, male and female do not have any natural sequence or uh, male doesn't come before female or female is not better than male or like that. So when these are just some names, labels of responses which do not have any uh, sort of relationship between themselves in a, in a natural order or is in a rank, then we call it a nominal variable. Uh, the same works for religion and response to treatment with a yes or no response. The other is when these categorical responses can assume natural order or if they have a rank, we call it ordinal variable. So in an ordinal variable, for an individual to achieve the higher order response, they have to be able to go through all the prior uh, responses before that higher response. For example, in a stage of disease for some malignancy, for a patient to present with stage four disease, then that patient must have went through all the other, the prior, three stages of the disease. So without going through the three stages, someone cannot reach to stage four of a disease. The same for response to treatment. For someone to reach to full recovery, that person has to go through some improvement uh, stages. So we call this ordinal variable. For the numerical variable, that is a variable which is measured using numbers. There are also two types of scale of measurement. The first one is when these numbers can assume only integer values, we call it a discrete or count data. For example, length of hospital stay, we count it as one, two, three, four in integer values, whole number. And for number of cases of hypertension or some disease condition, 
we measure it in terms of the numbers in terms of uh, whole numbers integers we can't say that we have one and a half hypertensive patients rather we just count them as one two three four using whole number the other is when these numerical values assume uh, values on a continuous scale that means when they can have both integer and decimal values we call them continuous variables and this the good example is weights the height of a patient bmi and many other laboratory values they assume values which are on a continuous scale uh, so um, when uh, we conduct study we usually have uh, a tendency to change the scale of measurement of our variables from one to another uh, f some of our variables stay the same for example gender we usually just take gender as male and female and later we analyze it the same way we collect it like by uh, as male and female but for some of our variables like age laboratory values uh, weight of a patient income and many other especially numerical values we tend to change them into categorical variables for the purpose of analysis so this is a common trend so there are two uh, variable measurement decision points that we should carefully make. The first one is the time of data collection and the second one is the time of analysis. During the, the time of data collection each and every variable has to be measured in their original scale of measurement. Uh, that means each and every variable has their original scale of measurement for example age instead of asking the patient in which age group he or she falls we should ask how old are you and just write the number because that's the original scale of measurement. But later during analysis, it's a common trend to categorize age into some uh, clinically meaningful groups so that the result can be analyzed within a clinically meaningful group and later targeted intervention for some age group can be provided. This is perfectly fine and can be done, but it should only be done after the data is collected in its original scale of measurement and later we can transform the data into different categories using uh, transformation uh, techniques, different transformation techniques. Uh, the same also works for not only a numerical variable but also a uh, categorical variable. For example, for disease stage, uh, if, let's say the disease stage has four stages. So on our questionnaire, we should be able to put all the four options and let our uh, participant or our interviewer select from the available four options. So all four options has to be put on our questionnaire, but later for analysis, we might decide to merge the first two groups and the last two groups and uh, condense it into two categories for the purpose of analysis. That's fine, but the original scale of measurement should always be kept at the time of data collection. Same works for BMI. We just have to take the numbers and later we can categorize it. And for income, we just take how much they earn within a month or a year and then later categorize it into some acceptable standard classification. So these are very important concepts that we shouldn't miss. So when we narrow it down, this is all about variables in general, but our main interest is understanding study variables. So study variables are variables that are included in our study and for which we collect data to answer our research questions. So these are just like any other variables that we have uh, described so far, but these are variables that we are particularly interested in using for our study. So that means for my study, the type of variables that I'm going to have are going to be different from the type of variables that someone is going to have for another study. So um, there are two major types of study variables in any research. The first one is outcome variable and the other is exposure variable. So outcome variable is the main variable that we are studying. That means the main problem that we want to measure in our study. So every research has starts with a research question so by that research question we want to answer or solve a problem that major problem that we want to answer or that we want to solve is called our main variable or outcome variable so um, uh, every research uh, has usually one research question so for one research question uh, we usually we are expected to have one outcome but sometimes sometimes we can have more than one research question within one research protocol. So if we decide to address more than one research question in one research protocol, like in a thematic research, let's say, then we're expected to have uh, 
an outcome variable for each and every research question. So if I have two research questions, then I'm expected to have two outcomes for the two different research questions. If I have three, I have to have three outcomes. So when we have only one research question, we just call our outcome variable just outcome variable. But when we have more than one research question in our study, then we are expected to have equal number of outcomes as uh, uh, which is equivalent to the number of questions that we have asked. So in that case, uh, we always have uh, one big question at hand as compared to the other questions that we're asking. So for the main research question, we'll have a primary outcome. And for the other research out, uh, research questions, we will have secondary outcomes. So when we have multiple research questions, we can label the outcomes as primary and secondary outcomes. And our primary outcome is the outcome that we are much more interested in studying as compared to the other outcomes. So um, in different research, you might have encountered the following terms, dependent or response variable. These are alternate terms for outcome variables, which you can use. So um, to see the different types of outcome variables, there are two types of outcome variables. The, the first one is in the outcomes or major outcomes. These are major ultimate outcomes that any research uh, would like to answer that is birth, days, and quality of life because every researcher at the end of the day wants to improve uh, birth outcome or wants to prevent death or wants to improve quality of life. So these are the three major ultimate outcomes that are considered to be in the outcomes in medical research. But in between that, we have intermediate outcomes, which are outcomes that are and indirect indicators for the above three uh, major outcomes. So we can study complication, hospitalization, many other uh, outcomes, which later will be inferred in terms of their effect on the major uh, outcomes of our study, which are uh, the three above outcomes. So uh, whenever possible, it's good to study birth days and quality of life outcomes. But when it's not convenient, this indirect or intermediate outcomes can be studied so that they can be indirectly used to infer or to make some conclusion about these major outcomes. So the other is exposure variable. These are variables that are assumed to cause uh, the problem or the outcome that we are studying. So these are factors that are assumed to affect our outcome. So unlike our outcome variable, in any research for one research question, we said we're supposed to have one outcome, but for one research question, we're supposed to have many or multiple exposures because unless we control uh, many exposure variables at a time, we won't be able to understand the pure effect of one exposure on the outcome. So uh, in every study, just like the outcome, we might have some uh, one or two out, uh, exposure variables that we are mainly interested in assessing. So we call that main exposure, the main exposure, and the remaining we call them other exposures. So in any study, we can have main and other exposure variables. Exposure variable is also uh, referred by the following names as independent variable, uh, explanatory variable, or predictive variable. So let's see an example for our research question. Does prophylactic heparin administration following ICH in adults reduce the incidence of DVT and hospitalization during the first day of follow-up compared to no prophylaxis? So here, as you can see, we have two outcomes, DVT and hospitalization. But let's say that there is a, 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 our main interest is in uh, identifying the development of DVT. So let's take this as our primary outcome and we can take hospitalization as our secondary outcome. So for the exposure variable, uh, from the research question, you can clearly see that uh, we the researchers are interested in studying uh, the effect of prophylactic heparin administration on the development of DVT or hospitalization. So our main exposure variable is prophylactic heparin administration. But as I said, for each end of research question, we should be able to collect as many exposure variables as we can. So we have to be able to collect data on all of these exposure variables. The, the rationale is to identify the pure effect of heparin on DVT or uh, hospitalization. 
uh, we have to be able con you have we have to be able to control all other potential confounding variables so a confounding variable is a variable which could distort or bias the relationship between uh, our main exposure and outcome let's say for example uh, we have administered heparin for a young uh, non smoking patient who uh, let's say due to different reasons uh, developed ICH and we did not administer uh, the heparin for an old patient who smokes and who also has many other comorbid illnesses like hypertension DM and others if eventually the, this patient develops DVT and this one doesn't then we can't give all the credit to the heparin that this young patient took Rather, it's because of the other additional healthy attributes that this patient has that he didn't develop DVT. And for the old patient, it's not just because he didn't take the heparin, it's because he has all these other additional factors. So if we want to get the pure effect of heparin administration on the development of DVT and hospitalization, then we should be able to control all potential uh, confounder variables that could distort the relationship between the two so we have to make sure that to include as many ex uh, confounder variables in our study uh, as we can so that we can get the pure effect of heparin administration on our outcomes so as for the scale of measurement of these variables well dbt is going to be measured as yes or no so it's a nominal age uh, if we're studying adult patients then it's a count data because for adults, we're not interested in measuring the month of their, their age. Rather, we just want to get the complete age only by asking if they're 20, 30, 31, 32. But if we're studying pediatric groups, using a continuous scale is very important because uh, the difference in months, weeks, or even days for uh, neonatal cases, for example, is very important. So we have to make sure to collect the month of their age. And w when they, they get younger, the day of the age is also very important. And hospitalization is going to be measured in number of days. So one, two, three, four, it's a discrete data. Income is continuous. Drug adherence, it can be measured on a scale like, let's say, one to four. So it's a nominal data. Or uh, uh, actually, we can also treat this as uh, ordinal if the adherence somehow has a natural order otherwise the patient can jump from not being adherent or low adherence to a very good adherence within a day it doesn't have to go through all the stage but if we believe that that's a natural order we can call it as uh, an ordinal data treatment timing of treatment initiation well it's it's like we have to measure the time in hours so it's a continuous data and all other variables that are mentioned here can be treated as nominal variables of different level of uh, responses. So uh, this is all about variables. Please attempt the quiz on variables to assess your progress. Uh, thank you for watching the video.